All right, hopefully you just finished importing in your Shopify sales CSV. You brought in your sales, including sales tax collected, your shipping received, and any refunds issued. We are now going to talk about how to find and enter all of the fees that you pay via Shopify or for your Shopify sales. Again, I'll be using the Shopify seller spreadsheet. This works the same for the Shopify import add-on. The only difference I want to note is that the import add-on won't have a standalone tab for Shopify transaction fees. Instead, you just enter it directly on this row on your summary tab. That's the only difference. So let's talk about what types of fees you actually pay to Shopify before I f tell you where to find them because there are a few different types and I just want to make sure that you understand all the fees that you are subject to so you can make sure you don't forget to enter any of those. They're all important deductions. There's basically five types of fees. First, we have what you actually pay for Shopify. That is your subscription fee. That may be monthly or annual for you. You may see it every month on your bill or you may only pay for it once a month. It's gonna differ based on what type of account you have. We'll cover how to find that. Next, we have what is called Shopify transaction fees. Technically, they call their transaction fees the fees that they may charge you if you choose not to accept Shopify payments. So this probably doesn't apply to you. I don't think it applies to hardly anybody these days because most of us opt to use Shop Pay or Shopify payments. They will only charge you transaction fees if you opt out of Shopify payments. And I don't mean if you offer Shopify payments, but your customer chooses another form of payment like PayPal or something. I mean, if you refuse to offer any shop pay option on your site, then you will have these transaction fees. So this does not apply to most of us. There are Shopify credit card processing fees which is totally different. That is like the, I don't know it off the top of my head, it's usually 2.9% plus like 30 cents or something per transaction. This is standard for any credit card processor, Stripe, PayPal, shop payments, et cetera. That is going to be covered last. Just don't get transaction fees and credit card processing fees confused. You can, however, use this Shopify transaction fees tab or row to enter those credit card processing fees if you want, because most of us don't really have Shopify transaction fees because we're using ShopPay. Hope that makes sense. Third, we have app fees. This is for any third-party applications that you pay for and integrate through Shopify. We often pay monthly for those sorts of things. You might also see marketing fees on here. I haven't broken that out as a separate category, but marketing fees for the new Shopify email app may show up here as well. Finally, we have shipping fees. This is only if you purchase your postage labels through your Shopify account. If you have it integrated through usually a third party app as part of Shopify, that will show up on your Shopify bill also. Like I mentioned, credit card processing fees. This is the percentage of credit card payments for shop pay that Shopify takes from your bill. And all of these, except for this fifth credit card processing fee, can be found in one place. I'm gonna show you where to find that and where to enter it, and then we'll cover how to fund the credit card processing fees. So head over to your Shopify account. You need to go to settings. It's no longer under finances. It used to be there back in the day, but now we find our bill under settings. Then you wanna click on billing. I'm gonna scroll down a tiny bit so you can't see my personal information up there, but you should see a past bills or recent bills screen. Again, Shopify tends to change how you find this every few months. If you're ever in doubt and your screen looks different, head over to the Google Doc instructions. Those tend to get updated quickly. Once you're looking at your past or recent bills area here under billing, you wanna look for the bill type called billing cycle for whatever month you are entering your fees and expenses for. So you usually have one billing cycle. This is like your bill for that month. It's like your invoice of, of your stuff. You may see other bill types besides billing cycle here like I do. I have a lump sum for my theme. I have some standalone apps that were caught outside of my billing cycle. I do need to enter those too, but for now I'm just gonna look at my bill cycle. So, I'm gonna look at my bill cycle for the month of March right now. So I'm gonna enter all of the expenses showing up on this bill 
for the date March 9th in my Shopify spreadsheet. If I want to download a copy of this bill, I can hit this export button up here and download it as a PDF. That's always nice to give me an itemized breakdown that I can save for my records. But I can enter these expenses either from the PDF or from the billing screen itself whenever I want. I'm going to go back over here. Let's enter this for March 9th on my Shopify seller spreadsheet. So first I have $101.97 of apps. There are a few different places that I could choose to enter this. I could put it as a Shopify monthly fee. I could put my apps as office expenses or advertising, depending on what they're for. There's really multiple ways that you can categorize different things. So I'm going to go ahead and take the stance that my Shopify monthly fees are going to be my subscription, but I could enter the apps there. Either one is fine. I'm going to go ahead and enter the apps under office expenses. So this was dated 3-9. It was $101.97. Make a little note to myself there. And now that amount will travel over to my March 2024 office expenses. Got that covered. What else do I need to enter here? I have my subscription plan here of $39. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter that as my monthly fee on my Shopify monthly fees. And I don't have postage because I'm selling a digital product here, so I don't have shipping, but you may say shipping show up here. If you had shipping, you'd wanna enter it over here on the yellow postage tab. Some of you may have a category called marketing for email marketing. You could enter that under the advertising tab if you wanted to. Again, since I offer shop pay, I don't have the transaction fees showing up here. They don't charge me for that. I do want to point out a couple of other things. You may have sales tax being charged on your expenses here. That's totally normal. There's a few different ways that you could tackle it. I could lump this $6.12 in with either my total apps or my total subscription, or I could apply my sales tax rate of 6% to both of these. That kind of more accurately covers it, but, but I'm just gonna be lazy and add that $6.12 here to my total app amount, and it's going to get lumped in there. So I've got that covered. You do wanna enter those sales tax. But then I also have, I think I signed up for Shopify with like some sort of promo where I got the first X amount of months free or something. So I have a subscription credit here of $39. Basically, I was not charged the $39 for my monthly plan. So due to that credit, I'm actually going to go back and just delete my entry for 39 cents there. Maybe I'll put zero to show that I considered it. So if you have a credit, you can reduce any of the fees you entered by the amount of that credit, it would be entered as a negative in that case. So that covers entering my monthly bill for Shopify. I'm gonna go back to this billing screen one more time. I do have an additional app that I pay for in the month of March for 106 bucks. Again, I can export a PDF of that. This was like a one-time fee that I had to pay for at the time that it did it. I don't think that this happens a whole lot, but it was $106, including sales tax. Again, I'm probably going to enter that as an office expense. It's where I usually put my apps. I'll enter a description, and that amount is also going to travel over to my March office expenses. So you wanna make sure you're entering everything that you see here somewhere on your main seller spreadsheet or your import add-on. Next, let's talk about how to find that fifth fee, your credit card processing fees for your Shopify pay checkouts. I used to tell you to find it under that same settings screen, but under payments and view payouts. But if you have started using the Shopify balance system as your bank account, you're not gonna see view payouts here anymore. So the easiest way to find it for any type of Shopify user is to head to the finance menu over here and then click on payouts. Once you're on this screen, you can just click export, go to items by date, select what month you want to export your fees for, your credit card processing fees for. I'm going to do the month of February. I leave this export as a CSV for Excel numbers or other spreadsheet programs, and then I hit export items. 
It's going to email me the file. You're going to have to go log into whatever email is listed up here and find the email. The email subject will be export of your payment transactions. You'll get an email for each one. And then as long as you are logged into your Shopify site, once you get this email, you can click on it and it will download as a CSV on your computer. So you can open it in Excel or upload it to Google Sheets or whatever software you're using. If you ever have trouble downloading this from your email, sometimes it works if you right click on it for some reason, then save it instead of downloading it, but it's doing fine with me just regular clicking on it right now. I've opened that CSV in Excel and now I can easily total up my fees for the month. Side note, anytime you see hashtags in a column, it just means that your column width isn't wide enough. You can click and drag to see all of it. There are a few different ways that we can do this. This is what I'm concerned about is column J right here. I can actually just click on column J and see that the sum of my credit card processing fees for this month, which is January, is $13.20. Most spreadsheet software will total that up for you in the bottom corner. So if I want to do it that way, I could just say for the month of January, so I'll date it January 31st at $13.20 of credit card processing fees. All right. And then that would travel forward over here to $13.20. If I don't want to add these together, or maybe my spreadsheet software is not doing that for me, the other thing that you could do is copy this column so I can copy those numbers. Let me get rid of this and pretend I didn't do that. Then I can paste it in my amount column. I could copy these dates, paste them in the date column, and then I just have Shopify credit card processing fees as the vendor and description. And then that will sum up and bring over that $13.20 for me. So you can put the sum here, you can copy and paste the individual transactions, whatever floats your boat. The main goal is that we get the credit card processing fees over here for the month. I do want to add that if you have other payment processors on your Shopify store that don't go through Shopify payments, you may need to log into those and find your fees that are taken out of those sales. So that could be Venmo, that could be something like Sezzle maybe. In October of 2024, Shopify Payments started bringing PayPal under their umbrella, which means that for most of us at this point, if that applies to you, you're not seeing any PayPal payments hit your PayPal account directly. It is going through Shopify Payments now instead. So you're not having to go into PayPal to find any separate PayPal fees for the PayPal sales processed via your shop's Shopify store via Shopify payment system. All right. So if that if you're not taking outside sales via PayPal now, you can rename this row to be something else. It's more applicable to you if you want. If for whatever reason you do still have sales going through PayPal directly, I do have a supplemental video on how to find your PayPal fees if you need to enter that in here. And from here, you want to start entering your other sales and your other expenses. Make sure you check out the videos on how to do that next.